Today we are going to pray the prayer, Psalm 18, and it will be a blessing in your life and in your family. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe to receive prayers and messages of faith. For those of you who are already subscribed, please share this video with others, a friend, a family member, so that they too may be blessed by this prayer. May God bless you in a special way. If you wish, make your prayer request, and we will present it before God. Amen. We will be reading Psalm 18, providing some explanations of this psalm, and we will also be praying based on Psalm 18. Psalm 18 says the following, a psalm of David. I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. In these verses, we can see this beautiful declaration of love from the psalmist David to God. He declares that the Lord is his shield, strength, and refuge in his life. We can apply this to our own lives and understand that God is your shield, strength, and refuge. In verse 3, the psalmist says further, I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. The pangs of death surrounded me, and the floods of ungodliness made me afraid. The sorrows of Sheol surrounded me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God. From his temple, he heard my voice, and my cry came before his ears. In these verses, we can see the psalmist declaring that snares of death and traps were set against his life. However, the Lord delivered him because he called upon the Lord in times of distress. This often happens in our lives as well. But God is faithful to break the snare and grant us victory because He is our shield, the one who gives us strength to overcome. And in the following verse, verse 7, it tells us even more. Then the earth shook and trembled, the foundations of the mountains also quaked and were shaken because He was angry. Here the psalmist is speaking about the wrath of God, His indignation, and the earth shook with the fury of the Lord. And in the following verse, verse 8, it depicts God's response to the enemies of David. Here the psalmist declares in verse 8 the stance of God in the face of wickedness, in the face of injustice. It says, smoke went up from his nostrils, and devouring fire from his mouth, coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also, and came down with darkness under his feet. He rode upon a cherub, and flew, he soared upon the wings of the wind. Here the psalmist is showing that God was indignant with the things done against him. That is why the Lord He has this posture of justice towards all those who rise against the anointed of the Lord. And you are anointed by God, you are anointed of the Lord, and whoever touches you touches God. Whoever touches you touches your Creator, who is the Lord of hosts. That is why the Bible says that we are the Bride of Jesus. Whoever touches the Bride touches the Groom. That is why the Bible says that the Lord is our Father, and whoever touches the Son or the Daughter touches the Father. So whoever touches you touches God. That is why the Lord is your shield, our shield. And in verse 11, the psalmist says even more, He made darkness his secret place, his canopy around him was dark. Waters and thick clouds of the skies. From the brightness before him, his thick clouds passed with hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. He sent out his arrows and scattered the foe, lightnings in abundance, and he vanquished them. Then the channels of the sea were seen, the foundations of the world were 
uncovered at your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters. In these verses we just read, we can see a God of justice acting in favor of those who serve him, to the point that the psalmist says that the Lord drew him out of many waters. These many waters that the psalmist is referring to are the struggles and adversities he was facing. And if you are going through any struggle, any persecution, know that the Lord will draw you out of the many waters. In other words, He will save you with a strong hand and an outstretched arm. That is why in verse 17, the psalmist says, He delivered me from my strong enemy, and from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a broad place, He delivered me because He delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in His sight. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all His judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also blameless before him, and I kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore the Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. With the merciful you will show yourself merciful, with a blameless man you will show yourself blameless. In these verses, the psalmist is showing how just our God is, how mighty our God is, how majestic our God is. Here, he is demonstrating the goodness of the Father towards him, and he is declaring how powerful God was in his life. And in verse 26, he continues by saying, With the pure you will show yourself pure, and with the devious you will show yourself shrewd. Here, in verse 20 and 26, it speaks of how with the merciful, God will show mercy, and with the sincere man, God will show sincerity. With the pure, God will show purity, and with the wicked, God will show cunningness. Here, the psalmist is referring to God as a just God, a God of justice. God will do good to those who do good, and God will bring harm to those who do evil. And in verse 27, he says further, for you will save the humble people, but will bring down haughty looks. You are my lamp, O Lord, my God, shine forth in my darkness. In this verse, the psalmist is saying that God will bring light into his darkness. And perhaps you may find yourself in a similar situation, going through a moment of darkness, a gloomy time. But God is saying, I will bring light to your darkness, and I will bring clarity to your life. The light of the Lord will reach your house, your life, and you will glorify the name of the one who lives and reigns forever. This psalm further reveals in verse 29, For by you I can run against a troop, and by my God I can leap over a wall. The way of God is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. It is a shield for all who trust in Him. 4. Who is God? except the Lord. And who is a rock, except our God? God is the one who strengthens me and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of deer and sets me on my high places. He trains my hands for battle so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. We need to understand that the author of this psalm is David, and that is why he uses this language of war as if he were going into a fight, a war, a battle. This same David was the one who defeated the Philistine army, the same one who defeated the giant Goliath. You know the story very well, and here the psalmist David is declaring that it is God who gives him strength, who surrounds him with strength. And God is doing the same thing in your life, my sister and my brother. God is giving you strength to overcome, empowering your arms to break iron bows, bronze bows. The Lord is giving you 
strength to rise above difficulties, to surpass afflictions and distress. Receive strength from God. And Psalm 18 says even more in verse 35, You have given me the shield of your salvation. Your right hand upholds me, and your gentleness makes me great. You enlarge my steps under me, and my ankles do not give way. I pursued my enemies and overtook them, I did not turn back till they were destroyed. I crushed them so that they could not rise, they fell beneath my feet. Here the psalmist is still using the language of war. When he went into battle, the Lord granted him strength, and he defeated his enemies. Bringing it to the present day, it is no different. We have spiritual enemies, forces of evil that fight against us 24-7. But God, the God of David, the God who manifested himself in David through this Psalm 18 that we are reading, he will give you strength. To overcome your enemies, to break through barriers, to conquer difficulties, and to defeat your enemies. And he makes a very important declaration in verse 39. He says, For you equipped me with strength for the battle, you made those who rise against me sink under me. And in verse 38, he speaks of how his enemies fell beneath his feet. So, in these verses 38 and 39, we can see that David's enemies had fallen at his feet, and even Jesus himself said that the Lord grants us power to tread on the forces of evil. Hey! My sister and my brother who are listening to me right now, at this moment, God is giving you strength to overcome evil, to tread on serpents and scorpions, and all the power of the evil one. Receive spiritual strength right now to conquer the darkness, to overcome the evil that may surround you. And in the following verses, it says more, You made my enemies turn their backs in flight, and I destroyed those who hated me. They cried for help, but there was no one to save them, to the Lord, but he did not answer. I beat them as fine. As wind-blown dust, I trampled them like mud in the streets. You have delivered me from the attacks of the people, you have made me the head of nations. People I did not know now serve me, foreigners cower before me, as soon as they hear of me, they obey me. They all lose heart, they come trembling from their strongholds. The Lord lives. Praise be to my rock. Exalted be God my Savior. He is the God. Who avenges me, who subdues nations under me, who saves me from my enemies. You exalted me above my foes, from a violent man you. Rescued me. Therefore, I will praise you, Lord, among the nations, I will sing the praises of your name. This is the last verse of Psalm 18. The psalmist declares, he gives his king great victories, he shows unfailing love to his anointed, to David and to his descendants forever. In this Psalm 18, the psalmist is using language of battles. That's why he talks about pursuing and defeating the enemy. But we know very well that our true enemies are not the people who speak ill of us, who envy us, who gossip about our lives. Our true enemies are the forces of evil, the malevolent spirits that fight against our lives. And this Psalm 18 is a psalm of war, a psalm of battle. Just as God anointed, strengthened, and empowered the psalmist to win the fights and wars, he will do the same in my life and in your life. God will give you spiritual capacity to overcome the spiritual battles you may be facing. Just as God empowered the psalmist in Psalm 18, God will also empower you to break down walls and conquer the forces of evil. And right now, I want to pray for blessings. May the blessings in Psalm 18 come down upon your life, your home, and your family. Close your eyes as I pray for you in this moment. Let's pray, Holy Spirit of Truth. We have just read Psalm 18, and we believe that you are the one who equips our hands, who trains our arms, so that we can break bronze. 
Bows. You are the one who enables us to leap over walls. You are the one who grants us strength. Just as the Lord anointed, equipped, and strengthened the psalmist David in Psalm 18, I ask you. In the lives of my sister and my brother who is listening to me, strengthen, equip, and grant victory. May the blessings of Psalm 18 be upon their home, their family, and the life of your daughter who is listening, your son who is hearing in the name of Jesus. May your Holy Spirit come and do the supernatural. Do what the doctor cannot do, do what the lawyer cannot do, do what the psychologist cannot do. Go, Lord, go there, Father, and perform the supernatural, the miracle in the lives of your sons and daughters, in the name of Jesus. Christ. Repeat these words with me, I take hold of all the blessings of Psalm 18. I take hold of my victory. The Lord is my strength, and in Him I will trust. He gives me strength to leap over walls. He gives me strength to overcome my enemies. He gives me strength to surpass my limits for the glory of God and the blessings of Psalm 18. May they be upon your life, your home, your family, and may the Holy Spirit of God strengthen and enlighten you, guiding your steps to make the right decisions and to overcome and defeat the enemies that come your way. Receive strength from the Father and the Holy Spirit to overcome, courage and encouragement to surpass your limits. I'll end here. The peace of the Lord Jesus, my dear brothers and sisters, and may God bless our lives in a very special way. Today, we will be offering a prayer for your life and your family. This prayer will be based on Psalm 91 which is the psalm of divine protection over our lives. May God bless us and may this week be a week of victory, accomplishments, miracles, and may the Lord grant you rich spiritual blessings. Feel free to leave your prayer requests, expressions of gratitude, or share your testimony in the comments of this video. And if you're new to this channel, I invite you to subscribe, turn on notifications, and become part of this prayer family. We are here every day, praying and seeking the face of God, and thanks to God. Many lives have been blessed, and many people have received blessings, miracles, and victories through our prayers. It is always a great joy to pray for you and ask God for His constant blessing upon our lives. Share this prayer from Psalm 91 with your friends and family. Surely, it will be a blessing in all our lives. And Psalm 90 is a well-known psalm. It says this, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my God, my refuge, my fortress, and in Him I will trust. For he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge, his truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. Nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look, and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him, I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him, 
I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and honor him. I will give you abundance of days and show you my salvation. These are the blessings of Psalm 91. Through this Psalm 91, we can perceive that God is the one who guards us. God is the one who protects us. God has kept your life. God has protected your story. You are in the palm of God's hand. And the blessings of Psalm 91 are upon your life, upon your family. And verse 7 says, A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. In other words, you may be surrounded by enemies, but God is your shield. God protects you. God defends you. And in verse 11, the psalmist declares, For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. In other words, God has sent a strong angel to protect you in this battle. In this battle, you are not alone. There are warrior angels, mighty angels fighting for your life. When you go to work, there are angels of God surrounding and protecting you. When you return from work, there are angels of God guarding your life. We may not perceive it with our eyes, but every day, God grants us deliverance. If we could see and perceive the spiritual world, we would witness angels warring against the forces of evil. God protects our lives 24-7. Sometimes, there are deliverances that we cannot perceive, but God is delivering us. So be assured, my sister and my brother, God has sent a strong angel to be with you in this battle, in the name of Jesus. Through the eyes of faith, I can see that there are angels of God surrounding your home, surrounding your life, and that which you have prayed for. The blessing you have prayed for, to protect someone. You, as a mother, praying and saying, Lord, protect my children. No, my sister, that nothing bad has happened in your child's life because of your prayer. When you pray for your children, God sends strong angels, warrior angels, to guard your children, to protect your relatives, your family. Every time we pray and ask God for protection, the Lord sends angels to undo the enemy's traps. In the name of Jesus, if the enemy has planned against your home, against your family, the enemy's plans are being undone now by the angel of God, the angel of the Lord. The angel of Psalm 91 is going to your home at this moment, cutting the ties, undoing the entanglements, and smoothing the path. If your ways are entangled, the angel of the Lord will untangle them because God has already given orders concerning you to grant you victory, conquest, and blessing. Claim the blessings of Psalm 91 in your life. Psalm 91 assures us that we are protected and guarded by God. We are in the shelter of the Most High and under the shadow of the Almighty. We can rest because God is our refuge, our fortress. He is present. Jesus said, Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. On Monday, God is with you. On Tuesday, God is with you. On Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, on every day of your week, God guards your life. God protects your life and sends mighty angels to guard and defend you. That's why the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 14. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? In other words, the angels of the Lord are guarding our lives by the mercy of God. And in this moment, let us pray to the Lord. I will ask God for the blessings of Psalm 91 to be upon your life and the life of your family. Amen. Let us pray. Sovereign Eternal God, Father, 
Creator of heaven and earth, in your holy and powerful presence. We are here and we want, Lord, in this moment of prayer, to present our lives before you, acknowledging that we are nothing without you. We need you, Lord. We are in need of your mercy, and it is because of your mercy that we are alive and standing. We want to ask for the blessings of Psalm 91. Lord, may these blessings of Psalm 91 be upon our lives, God, and upon our families, not just this week, this month, or this year, but in the coming years as well. Lord, may your blessing, the blessings of Psalm 91, be upon our homes every single day of our lives. For your word reveals that those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So we ask you, Lord, to hide us in the secret place of the Most High and under your shadow. Lord, make us rest. God, your word also says in Psalm 91 that we shall declare, The Lord is our refuge, our fortress, and in him we trust. For it is you, O God, who delivers us from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. Deliver us, Lord, from the snares of the enemy, from the traps of the fowler. Break the snares, Lord, undo the enemy's schemes, and guard our families. Guard our lives with your love, your grace, and your righteousness. In the name of Jesus, we ask you to cover us, Lord, with your feathers, for under your wings we find safety. Lord, be our shield, Almighty God, and may your truth protect us. Come to guard our souls, Lord God. You are faithful to save. You are faithful to heal. You are faithful to transform. You are faithful to strengthen our hearts in your presence. Strengthen, Lord, the weary. Increase the strength of those who have no vigor. Lift up those who are discouraged, I ask you, Lord. Grant them courage, grant them strength, and grant them boldness. For your word says that though a thousand may fall at our side and ten thousand at our right hand, we will not be harmed. So, Lord, guard us. Guard us from evil and danger. Guard us from distress. Guard us from suffering. Cut, Lord, the cords that the enemy tries to use to bind the souls of your people. God, in the name of Jesus, if there is anyone who is imprisoned by depression, trapped in sadness, held captive by past disappointments, come and break that spiritual prison. May all sadness, all anguish, and all depression vanish in the name of Jesus, and may relief, peace, strength, joy, and encouragement come in its place in your presence. Holy Spirit, your word says in Psalm 91, verse 10, No harm will overtake you, no disaster will come near your tent. God, you guard our homes, you guard our lives, you guard our coming and going. Your word confirms in verse 11, For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Send forth, Lord, a mighty angel to undo the bonds, to unravel the entanglements. God, we acknowledge that the glory is yours and everything comes from you, and all that exists stems from your greatness, your glory, and your love. And we ask you, Lord, to send a warrior angel to wage war in the spiritual realm, that this angel may undo the enemy's bonds in the mighty name of Jesus. Because we believe in the power that resides in your name, for through your name demons fall, through your name Jesus, illnesses disappear. And through your name Jesus, miracles and the supernatural occur. And in your name, we ask you to guard us, to deliver us, in your name, I beseech you. If there is someone who is sick listening to me at this hour, 
may all sickness in their bones, in their flesh, in their body, in their soul, in their spirit, may all sickness, whatever the ailment, vanish now in the mighty name of Jesus, God. We want to claim all the blessings of Psalm 91 in our lives. God grants us spiritual authority. Lord, grant us abundance of days and show us your salvation. May these blessings of Psalm 91 manifest in our lives, in our homes, and in our families. We ask you, O God, for you are omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You are the Almighty, the Creator of the heavens and the earth. You are the one who heals, who saves, who liberates, and who transforms. You are the one who makes the impossible happen, and we ask you in the name of your beloved Son, the one who died and rose again on the third day. The one who walked on water, the one who made the dead rise, the one who made the blind see, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We ask for the blessings of Psalm 91 in our lives, for the glory of your name. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Ah! Amen and thanks be to God. May God bless your life, my dear sister, and my dear brother. Know that we are together in this prayer covenant. We are here every day praying, seeking the face of God. Claim your victory. Take hold of the blessings of Psalm 91 in your life. Amen. Send this prayer to your friends, to your family. May God bless your life and your family in a special way. And remember, you were born to conquer and experience all the blessings of Psalm 91 in your life. Today we will be praying Psalm 46. This psalm is incredibly beautiful, just like the other psalms, and we will be praying verse by verse. We will analyze, examine what each verse reveals to us, and based on that, we will offer a prayer inspired by Psalm 46. God is our refuge. Before we begin, I want to invite you to subscribe to the Activate Notifications channel. If you are already subscribed, please share this prayer with a friend, so they can also participate in this blessed prayer. May God bless your family, may God bless you in a special way. Psalm 46 is a psalm that deeply speaks to my heart, and God will speak powerfully to your heart through this mighty psalm. Psalm 46, verse 1, says that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. In this verse, we can perceive that God reveals Himself to us as a refuge, a source of strength, and a readily available help in times of trouble. Anguish is a difficult moment that we all experience. Who hasn't gone through a moment of anguish, a moment of affliction? But this psalm comforts our hearts by showing us a God who, besides being a refuge, is also our strength and a present help in moments of anguish. I don't know how you came across this video. Perhaps you, who are listening to me, are feeling sad, downcast. Has a problem arisen in your life? But I want you to know that God is your refuge. God is your strength, He is your refuge because He guards you, He guards you because He loves you. He is your strength because He sustains you with power, grace, love, and kindness. He is your help. 
In moments of anguish, affliction, he comes to rescue us. That's how the people of Israel were in the midst of the desert. Before them was a vast sea, but God was a very present help in times of trouble. The sea opened up, and the people crossed on dry land. Know that your God is present in moments of affliction, in moments of anguish, in moments of scorn, in the difficult moments of life. God is a refuge and strength for your life, for your soul. And verse 2 tells us, Therefore we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea. Therefore we will not fear, even if the circumstances of life, even if life's moments are difficult, chaotic, even if the world is in crisis, I will be in Christ. Even if the world is in calamity, I will be in the refuge and strength, guarded and protected by God. When the psalmist in verse 2 says, Therefore we will not fear. He is saying, Because God is my refuge and strength, I will not be afraid. In other words, you don't need to be afraid. You don't need to be afraid because your God is a mighty God who guards you, defends you, and is a shield in your life. So he says in verse 2, Therefore we will not fear. I will not be afraid, I will not be afraid, because God is my refuge and strength. Every time fear knocks on the door of your heart, tell fear, God is my refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. Do not be afraid, do not be afraid of adversities, problems, conflicts, giants, or walls. Do not be afraid, because the God who called you is faithful, and He guarantees your victory. He guarantees blessings in your home, in your family. The God you serve is a refuge and strength, a present help in times of anguish. And for this reason, the psalmist tells you, therefore we will not fear, even if the earth gives way. Just see the confidence of the psalmist. He is saying that even if the earth moves, even if the earth gives way, he will not fear, even if the mountains are carried into the midst of the sea. In other words, even if an earthquake happens, I will not fear because my God is my refuge and strength. That's what the psalmist is saying in verse 2. And in verse 3, he goes even further, even if the waters roar and foam, even if the mountains tremble with its tumult. In other words, even if everything around me is conflicting, even if everything around me seems difficult, complicated, problematic, even so, I will not fear. Even if the earth gives way, even if the waters roar and foam, even if the mountains are cast into the midst of the sea, even so. I will continue to trust in God because I know that my Redeemer lives and will ultimately rise upon the earth. And the psalmist is teaching us that we need to trust in God. And how were Jesus' disciples in the midst of the storm? Jesus was sleeping in the boat. The storm was raging, and the disciples were fearful, they were afraid. Jesus wanted to teach his disciples that they didn't need to be afraid because the one in the boat was greater than the seas, greater than the winds, greater than everything. Jesus rises up and calms the sea and the wind. Jesus is rising up in your life today to calm the storm, to calm the contrary winds. For this reason and for this purpose, do not fear, do not be dismayed, and do not be afraid. Do as the psalmist did in Psalm 46, therefore we will not fear. Even if the earth gives way, and even if the mountains are carried into the midst of the sea, even if the waters roar and foam, even if the mountains tremble with its tumult. In verse 4 of chapter 46, the psalmist goes even further. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. 
Notice that in this verse 4, the psalmist tells you that there is a river, and this river whose streams make glad the city of God. Which river is the psalmist referring to in Psalm 46? It is the river of living water. It is the same river that Jesus spoke of to the Samaritan woman. In the Gospel of John, it is the same river described in the book of Revelation. It is the river that brings life, also described in the book of Ezekiel about this river. This is the river that brings joy. The waters of this river are the Holy Spirit. Water represents purity. Water represents purification. And the river that purifies is the river that transforms. It is the river that heals diseases. It is the river that cures sin, that washes our spiritual garments, and the waters of this river. It is the Holy Spirit of God that brings joy to the city, the dwelling place of the Most High. This river is now entering your house. This river of God, the purifying river, the transforming river, the healing river, the river that opens doors, the river that brings joy. The river that comforts our hearts. The Holy Spirit of God is entering your house, entering your life, and purifying your soul. And it is about this river that verse 4 is referring to. The river that represents the Holy Spirit of God, and this river, the streams of these waters, brings joy to the city of God. In other words, the Holy Spirit brings joy to our hearts. And in verse 5, it says even more, God is in her midst. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. Notice that in verse 5 of Psalm 46, it says, God is in her midst. The text does not say that God is on the right side, the left side, in front, or behind. No. The text says that God is in the midst. What does it mean that God is in the midst? When you place something in the middle of a room, everything around it seems to fade away. When you put something in the middle, highlighted in the center of a room, everyone who enters can perceive what is in the middle. Have you noticed? Everything in the center is observed, everything in the center stands out. When the text says in verse 5 that God is in her midst, the psalmist is saying that God is in the center. God is the center of attention. God is in the midst. It means He is the most important thing in my life. God is the most important. That's why He is in the center, in the midst. Notice that when Jesus went to die on the cross, He died in the midst of two thieves. Even in His death, the middle, the center, belonged to Him. God is in the midst, in the center of your life. God is in the midst of your house. God is in the midst of your marriage, your work. When God is in the center of our lives, the Word of God tells us that God is in her midst. In other words, when God is in the center of our lives, highlighted in our lives, we will not be shaken, and God will help us when morning breaks. So allow God to be in the center of your life, and nothing will shake your faith, nothing will shake your hope in God, and the Lord will help you. When morning breaks, in other words, God will be ready to help you and come to your aid. And in verse 6, the psalmist declares, The nations rage, the kingdoms totter, he utters his voice, the earth melts. When the psalmist says, The nations rage, the kingdoms totter, he utters his voice, the earth melts, we can see the power, the potency of God's voice. Notice that in this verse 6, the psalmist tells us that the Lord utters his voice and the earth melts. In other words, the voice of the Lord is so powerful that the earth melts. 
The voice of the Lord is so powerful that no stony heart can withstand the voice of God. The voice of the Lord is so powerful, and curses are broken, that all evil, everything that comes against your life, is undone. Why? Because the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is capable of melting the earth. Here the psalmist is trying to exalt. He wants to show us how powerful the voice of the Lord is. And this voice is saying to you today, Daughter, son, do not fear, for I am with you. I am your refuge and your strength. A present help in times of trouble. And in verse 7, the psalmist makes a very important declaration. He says, The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. In this verse 7, the psalmist is saying, The Lord of hosts is with us. Hey! I'm telling you that the Lord of hosts is with you. Yes, I'm not saying that the president is with you, that the governor is with you. That the air force, navy, army is with you. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that the God who made the heavens and the earth is with you. The God who made the sea and the stars is with you. The one who is with you is greater. The one who is with you is greater than the sun, greater than the moon. The one who is with you is greater than the stars. The one who is with you is greater than the seas. The one who is with you is greater than the giants. Who is with you is greater than the governors. Who is with you is greater than everything and greater than everyone. Who is with you is the one who made the heavens and the earth, the one who parted the Red Sea for the people of Israel to pass on dry land. The one who brought down the walls of Jericho, the one who made the giant fall to the ground, the one who healed the sick, the one who died and rose again on the third day. It is this one who is with you. Therefore, take courage, rejoice, and rest your heart, because the one who is with you is stronger than evil, stronger than darkness, and stronger than wicked deeds. The one who is with you is the Lord God Almighty. So do not be afraid. And Psalm 46, verse 7, tells us, The Lord of hosts is with us. Say it out loud, the Lord of hosts is with me, is with us, and I will not fear. The God of Jacob is our refuge. In verse 8, Psalm 46 continues to say, Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he has brought on the earth. Here the psalmist extends an invitation in verse 8, Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he has brought on the earth. The psalmist is saying, Come and see, come and see how powerful God is. Come and see the works he has done. When the text speaks of the desolations he has brought on the earth, it means that God does great things. Notice that he did something tremendous in Egypt, bringing ten plagues upon them to liberate his people. See how God parted the sea for the people of Israel to pass through and closed it to prevent the Egyptians from following. So, what desolations has he brought on the earth? That is why the psalmist says, Come and behold, come and see how faithful God is in your life. How faithful God is in your home, how faithful God is to you. And in verse 9, he says even more, he makes wars cease. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth, he breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two, he burns the chariots with fire. This verse 9 is very interesting because in verse 7, the psalmist says that the Lord is the Lord of hosts. However, in verse 9, he says that the Lord makes wars cease. In other words, 
God is a God who is the Lord of hosts, but what is God's battle? God's battle is to cease wars. What does that mean? Ceasing wars means God is saying, I will cease the wars in your family. I will cease the wars in your workplace. I will cease the conflicts, the fights. I will bring peace among your family members. I will bring peace in your city, in your neighborhood. In other words, God is the God who is the Lord of hosts, but he comes to cease, to stop the wars, the struggles, the trials, and the afflictions of life. Very powerful. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. It is for him to cease wars to the end of the earth. What will he do? He will break the bow, cut the spear in two, and burn the chariots with fire. And in verse 10, the psalmist is filled with God and he says, Be still, and know that I am God, I will be exalted among the nations, I will be exalted in the earth. This verse 10 is very strong, very powerful. God is saying to me, to you, be still, calm down. Why so much anxiety, why so much hurry? Be still, be still in the Lord. Verse 10, Psalm 46 is saying, this calms your heart. Do not be anxious, do not rush. Rest in the Lord, be still in your soul. Be still, rest. Be still, God is saying in verse 10 of Psalm 46, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted on the earth. Be still your soul, rest in the Lord, for He takes care of you. He watches over you. He works for you. He fights for you. He heals your soul, He transforms your life. He lifts you up with power. He is your refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. For this reason, be still. Know that God will be exalted on the earth and among the nations. And in verse 11, the psalmist concludes the psalm by saying, The Lord of hosts is with us. He reinforces what he said in verse 7, The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Notice that in verse 7 and in verse 10, the psalmist makes the same declaration. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. I was wondering with God, asking God why the psalmist repeated the same phrase twice in Psalm 46. In verse 7, he says, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And in verse 11, in verse 11, I apologize, I said verse 10, in verse 11 the psalmist repeats the same phrase again. In verse 10, he says, Be still, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations, I will be exalted on the earth. And in verse 11, he repeats what he said in verse 7, The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Why does he repeat it twice? God ministered to my heart. God spoke to me. Why does the psalmist repeat the same phrase twice? Do you know why? It's because many times we forget that the one who is with us is powerful. Have you noticed that in times of affliction, in moments of anguish? Sometimes we think that God is not listening to our prayer. That's how the disciples were in the boat when the storm was raging. They forgot that the Lord of hosts, the one who calms the sea and the wind, was there in the boat. The psalmist repeats the same phrase twice in verse 7 and again in verse 11 because he wants to strengthen, strengthen in our minds that the one who is with us is the Almighty God. And my sister and my brother, 
The one who is with you is not a weak God. The one who is with you is not a God who needs help. The one who is with you is not a God who walks with a crutch. The one who is with you is not a small God. The one who is with you is an almighty God. That's why the psalmist repeats in verse 7 and verse 11 that the one who is with us is the Lord of hosts. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And God, repeating, God only repeats what we need to hear when we need to hear it multiple times. That's why in Psalm 46, he repeats it twice in verse 7 and verse 11. He, the Lord of hosts, is with us. He is with us to give us victory. He is with us to heal, transform, lift up, strengthen, completely transform our lives. So do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed, for the Lord of hosts is in your life. Amen. Claim this word. Claim what God has promised for you. I want to invite you at this moment to pray with me. Let's pray to the Lord, asking for His divine providence, seeking healing, salvation, and the blessings of Psalm 46 in our lives. Close your eyes and pray with me. Holy Spirit of God, we have meditated on each verse of Psalm 46. And we believe, O God, that you are the God of the impossible. You are the God who accomplishes the impossible in our lives. You are our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. We will not fear even if the mountains crumble and everything around us shakes, for we are confident in you. We are rooted in the rock who is Christ Jesus. In this moment of prayer, I want to present the life of your servant who is listening to me, the life of your handmaid who is listening to me. Come and bless, come and strengthen, come and lift up, come with your grace, Come and give encouragement to her and to him in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I ask you, God, to send your angel and may your angel undo every entanglement, remove every obstacle that is blocking the victory of your daughter and your son. Guard your people, Lord, for you are the Lord of hosts. We believe in your power. You are the Lord of hosts, and you are with us to protect, guard, defend, and guide us. Therefore, Lord, fight for us. Come and cease the wars to the ends of the earth. Put an end to the conflicts in households, the strife between couples, the conflicts at work, the conflicts in the church, and the conflicts in families. Let them all cease now, let them be annihilated. Let all evil, every negative force, every attack, and every counterattack from the enemy be undone by the power of Jesus' blood. Lord, cover our families, our homes with your blood. Defend us, protect us, guard us with your power and mercy. God, in the life of this woman listening to me and this man listening to me, pour out your blessings, your gifts, your virtue, and your victory. Shower us with blessings, grace, and victory over the lives of my sister and my brother, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We ask for the blessings of Psalm 46 in our lives, in our families, in our finances, and in our emotions. Lord God, bring healing, bring liberation, bring transformation, open doors, and grant victory. For you are our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. In the name of Jesus, we take possession, Lord, of all the blessings, promises, and gifts that you have for our lives. In the name of Jesus, Amen and thanks be to God. Repeat this phrase with me, I take possession of all the blessings of Psalm 46 in my life. Repeat it again. God is my refuge and strength, 
a present help in difficult times. Say it louder, say it for hell to hear, for heaven to hear, for people to hear. Declare for everyone to hear, God is my refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. In God, I can do all things because He strengthens me. Amen. Take hold of victory. Believe that you were born to overcome, and nothing and no one can steal from you the blessings of God that are in your life. Amen. May God bless you. If you are not subscribed to the channel yet, subscribe and enable notifications. May God bless you. May the peace of the Lord and the prosperity of Christ be in your life. May the blessings of Psalm 46 be upon you. May God bless your life and your family in a very special way. Today, we will be praying Psalm 125, and I believe that through this prayer, God will bless your family. God will bless your financial life. God will bless your entire life. God will bless your marriage and your children. God will bless your life. Believe with all your heart and most. Importantly, God will bless your spiritual life. Our spiritual life needs to be in fullness before God, and this psalm will be a fortress for your spirit. It will lift your spirits, strengthen you, recharge your energy, and you will glorify the name of the Lord. Before we begin, I want to invite you to share this video with a friend. It may bless someone else's life. If you wish, leave your prayer request or comment below. I always read the comments and include the requests in my prayers. Amen. Let us meditate on Psalm 125 and understand what God wants to reveal to us through His Word. Don't leave the video, stay until the and because God has a powerful revelation to deliver to you through this mighty psalm, Psalm 125. God will speak strongly to your heart. The answer you need will come into your life today. Believe with all your heart and soul. Let's open the book of Psalms. If you have a Bible near you, open it to the book of Psalms and follow along with me. Psalm 125 says, verse 1, those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken but endures forever. In this verse, we can perceive God's faithfulness in the lives of those who trust in Him. The text says that those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken but endures forever. So, my friend, what has been shaking your faith? What has been shaking your hope? What has been shaking your life? What is troubling you? Because the text says that those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken but endures forever. I know that we are made of flesh and bone, and sometimes we feel weakness, we feel discouraged. It's normal for that to happen, but the sorrows of life, the weaknesses, the difficult moments cannot take away our faith, cannot take away our hope in Jesus Christ. The tribulations, the struggles of life cannot dim the brightness of the Holy Spirit on your face. Do not allow your faith to be shaken by the struggles and adversities you may face. Yes, you may go through difficult times. You may face challenges, but these difficult moments will not determine your faith, your defeat, or your failure. On the contrary, the difficult moment you may be experiencing is making you stronger, stronger in God, and your faith will not be stolen. The enemy may think he will destroy you. But Satan has two jobs, to rise and to fall because the one who is with us is greater than the darkness. The one who is with us is greater than the enemies. The one who is with us is the Almighty God and He is faithful in your life. He is faithful in your story. And the text says that. 
Those who trust in the Lord are like the mountains of Zion that cannot be shaken. Notice that spring, autumn, summer, and winter pass. Seasons pass, time passes, but a mountain doesn't move. The earthquake may come, but the mountain doesn't move. The storm may come, but the mountain doesn't move. If you look at the hills, you see the mountains. You will realize that year after year, the mountains remain firm in the same place. That's how it is for those who trust in the Lord. Storms may come, struggles may arrive, but you will not move from the position God has placed you in. In the position God has placed you, no one can take you away. Your position is that of a child of the king, a daughter of the king, a son of the king. Your position is that of a princess of Christ, a prince of the Lord, and no one can remove you from this position. That's why you are like the unshakable Mount Zion in God. Say yes with faith, I am like Mount Zion, unshakable in the presence of the Lord. Do you know why you are unshakable? Because you can do all things through Him who strengthens you. Do you know why you are unshakable in God? Because the Lord, the Creator of heaven and earth, is your strong shield. He is the one who guards you, guides you, protects you, and defends you. He is the Lord of your life. That's why you are unshakable in God. And the text says in verse 1, Those who trust in the Lord. Do you trust in God? If you trust in God, then you are like Mount Zion that cannot be shaken. So, do not allow the circumstances of life to shake you. Stand firm because Victory is coming. Stand firm because God is opening doors for you. Stand firm in the presence of the Lord. Do not look to the left or right. Look ahead. Look to Christ because that's where your help comes from. That's where your answer comes from, and God is answering your prayer. And God wants to tell you, daughter, calm down, be at peace because I am working in secret, and I will honor you openly. I am your God, your shepherd, your healer, your judge, and I am opening doors for you. Stand firm in the promise because God is never late, and He does not come too early. God arrives at the right time, at the appointed time, and He fulfills the promise He made to you. And in verse 2, the psalmist says, As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds His people, both now and forevermore. Verse 2 is declaring a promise, and just as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds His people. Who are the people of God? You and I. God is around us. He is around us to defend us. He is around us to guard us. He is around us to protect us and grant us the victory we desire and need. God is around your family. God is around your home. God is around your work. God is around your life. And no evil arrow shall touch you because God is around you. Believe. Believe with all your heart because the enemy cannot touch you when there is a mighty God surrounding you. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The one who is, the one who was, the Almighty, is around you, and you shall not be shaken because the Lord is with you. God is with you even in the moments when you thought of giving up. God was there, holding your hand, saying, Daughter, son, do not fear, I am with you even in the moments when you looked around and said, no one understands me, no one comprehends me. Hey, is there a God who understands you? Is there a God who comprehends you? And he is carrying you in his arms, daughter. Son, victory is coming to your home, to your life. Embrace this word. 
Believe that God is using this humble servant to confirm the promise in your life through this powerful word. Just as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds His people, surrounding our lives. Verse 3 tells us, For the scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous, so that the righteous may not stretch out their hands to do wrong. This text is saying that the injustice of the wicked, the evil of the wicked, the ungodliness, will not remain upon us because God will give us deliverance. God will not allow the injustice, represented by the scepter of wickedness, to be upon you. The scepter of wickedness represents the injustice that we often experience in our daily lives, the injustice we sometimes face among friends and even among family members. But the scepter of wickedness, the injustice, will not be upon your life. On the contrary, God will rebuke those who oppress you, those who persecute you, those who slander you, those who gossip about you, those who speak ill of you. God will rebuke them. And show everyone that He is your God, your shepherd, your judge, your advocate. Because whoever touches you, touches God. That's why He is within us and at the same time around us to protect and guard us. So, for this reason, be encouraged, rejoice, and trust in them. Lord, because God is your judge, the one who guards you, the one who goes before you to grant you victory. And verse 4 tells us, Do good, O Lord, to those who are good, and to those who are upright in their hearts. Here the psalmist is pleading, declaring, asking the Lord to do good to those who are good, to those who are upright in heart. Remain with a righteous heart before God, for the Lord will do good to you. Jesus said that if an earthly father, being imperfect, gives good gifts to his children, imagine how much more will God, who is perfect, do good. God is good. Let me repeat for you to understand. God is good. You know what that means. It means that God's goodness is in your life. It means that this goodness opens doors for you. This goodness comforts you, this goodness lifts your head, this goodness gives you courage, grace, strength, and energy to continue marching in the presence of the Lord. May the goodness of God visit you in this moment, right now as you are listening to me. Receive the Holy Spirit of God, strengthening you and saying, I am giving you strength to keep walking in my presence. Be encouraged and rejoice. Because goodness, my goodness, is upon your life, says the Lord. And the text goes on to say, in the last verse of Psalm 125, it says, But as for those who turn aside to their crooked ways, the Lord will lead them away with evildoers. Peace be upon Israel. In this fifth verse, the psalmist concludes the psalm by saying that those who walk in crooked paths will be punished by God, they will be judged by God. Those who practice evil will be judged by God. When we turn on the news, we see so much violence, so much evil. Hey! No evil will escape. The punishment of the Lord. But he concludes the psalm by saying, Peace be upon Israel. And do you know who the Israel of God is? You and I. We are the spiritual Israel of God. Peace will be upon our lives, upon our homes, upon our families. Reading Psalm 125 now, we can understand the security we have in God. We can understand the refuge we have in God. By reading this Psalm 125, we can comprehend that God makes us strong in difficult times. That God will judge the wicked with righteousness. And in moments of tribulation, the Lord will be our peace, our rest. If you are going through a difficult time, receive this word of encouragement and spiritual strengthening. Remain firm in the presence of the Lord, trusting in Him because God is making you like 
The mountain of Zion, unshakable in the presence of God, unshakable to receive victory. For God prepares the victory, and He also prepares our lives to receive the victory. God is making you like the unshakable mountain of Zion. So when the victory, the complete blessing, arrives in your life, you can rejoice powerfully, take a deep breath, and say, Only the Lord is God, my sister and my brother. We are passing through this world, but one thing is certain, as long as we are here on this earth, we can rejoice in the presence of the Lord and enjoy the rich blessings that the Lord gives us. Therefore, rest your heart, rest your soul, be at peace, sleep peacefully, because God is taking care of your tomorrow, and what you are asking for in prayer, the Lord says to you, I am working in silence, and I will honor you publicly. Just trust in me, because those who trust in the Lord are like the mountains of Zion that cannot be shaken but endure forever. Amen. Claim your victory. Take hold of the blessings of Psalm 125 in your life. In this moment, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for your life and ask God for the blessings of Psalm 125 in your home, in your financial life, in your emotional life, in your ministry, and in your spiritual life. May God bless you abundantly. Amen. Close your eyes, focus on God. I want to pray for you, regardless of what your problem may be, I am here to pray for you. It is my pleasure to pray for your life because your victory is my victory. I want to rejoice in your victory, and I would greatly appreciate it if when you receive it, you come back here and comment, sharing your testimony of victory. Amen. Let us pray. Sovereign God and Eternal Father, Creator of the ends of the earth, we are in your holy presence, and we have just read and meditated. On Psalm 125. We understand that those who trust in you are like the mountains of Zion, unshakable and enduring forever. God, listen to the prayer of this humble servant who is asking for your blessing in this moment for your servant on the other side, who is asking for this blessing. Your child is asking for this blessing. We have just read and meditated on Psalm 125 and understood in this psalm that those who trust in you are like the mountain of Zion that will not be shaken. Therefore, strengthen us in your presence to continue marching with the power and authority of your Spirit. The Holy Spirit of Truth fills our hearts with faith. Through this prayer, may the hearts of my sister and my brother be filled with faith and conviction in you. The Holy Spirit of God goes where the doctor cannot go, where the lawyer, judge, or prosecutor cannot go. Perform the extraordinary miracle in the life of this woman and this man who is listening to me in this moment. God, in the name of Jesus, enter the hearts and remove all sadness, all anguish, now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. May your peace and mercy be in this house, in this family. May your holy peace, Lord, be poured out in our hearts. God, remove all anxiety, all worry, all anguish, all sadness. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you are feeling any anguish at this moment, place your hand on your heart. If you are feeling any sadness right now, place your hand on your heart, and I will command that this sadness, this anguish, be replaced with joy, trust, and faith in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Anguish, sadness, depression, fear, anxiety. I give you the command now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in the name of Jesus, I will count from one to three, and you will leave. Sadness, anguish, bitterness, leave. In the name of Jesus, I count one. Sadness, this heart is not your place. Depression, you have no power over this life. I count. Two. I decree God's blessing upon this house, this family, 
this life that is listening to me in this moment. I count three. Receive peace. Receive love, receive grace, receive encouragement, receive virtue, receive power, receive strength to overcome. Receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God in your life at this moment. Open your mouth and say, I am a conqueror, I am a conqueror in Christ Jesus, because I trust in the Lord, and I am like Mount Zion. Say it loudly, say it for hell to tremble. Say it for your heart to hear. Say it for the angels to listen. Say it like this, I am unshakable in God. Because I trust in the Lord. Therefore, I am like Mount Zion, unshakable and enduring forever. Say it loudly, I am unshakable in God and I endure forever. Say yes to the blessings of Psalm 125. They are in my life, in my family, in my home. They are upon me. In the name of Jesus, take possession of victory and believe. God is with you. Amen. All honor, all glory, all praise, and majesty be to the Lord. God Almighty forever. And may God bless your life. May this psalm have refreshed your soul. If you are not subscribed yet, subscribe to the channel here on YouTube. Enable notifications so that whenever a new prayer is released, you receive it firsthand. And remember, you were born to conquer and live every promise of God. Today we will be praying Psalm 126, and God will surely bless us in a very special way. Share this video with your friends. Feel free to make your prayer request. I am always presenting before God all the prayer requests, and may the blessings and victories of the Father be upon your life and your family. In the name of Jesus, Psalm 126 is a beautiful and lovely psalm, just like all the others. Let's read it verse by verse and let's also pray Psalm 126. Stay until the end of this prayer, this video. I am confident that God will speak powerfully to you through this prayer, through this message. Psalm 126 says, When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue with singing. In verses 1 and 2, we can contemplate the faithfulness of our God towards us. A God who does not forsake His people. A God who is always with us to defend us and grant us victory. And in verse 2, the psalmist declares, Then our mouth was filled with laughter. In other words, in our lives, we smile. Sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes the struggles and trials of life may try to take the smile off your face, but don't stop smiling. Don't stop rejoicing in the presence of the Lord our God. No matter how much the struggles end. Adversities of life come against you, don't let anything in this world, nothing on this earth, take the smile off your face, the smile off your face. It was God who designed it, and God loves and desires for you, me, and us to smile and rejoice. That's why verse 2 says, Then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue with singing. Never stop smiling, never stop dreaming, never stop believing that the best from God has already come. And even more blessings will come into your life. Never stop praising, singing hymns of worship to the Lord. The Bible tells the story of Paul and Silas being imprisoned because they had preached the gospel, and it describes how they prayed and sang hymns of praise. This story is written in the book of Acts of the Apostles. And suddenly, while Paul and Silas were singing, there was an earthquake, and the chains were broken. Your praise, your worship, breaks the chains of hell, and while you worship, the Lord works in your favor. 
In the moment you play a gospel song and start listening to that worship song, at that very moment, the demons fall to the ground because Satan does not like worship. The enemy dislikes the praise that adores the Creator. And in the moment that we worship, hell trembles. In the moment that we worship, the heavens open, in the moment that we worship, angels descend and ascend. In the moment that we worship, chains are broken, and victory arrives in our lives. And when Paul and Silas were worshipping, singing, there was an earthquake in that prison, and the chains and shackles were broken for the glory of God. I don't know, my sister and my brother, the problem you are living or facing. But, one thing I am sure of, while you worship, the Lord is sending a strong angel to break curses, to break barriers. The Lord is sending his power to undo evil and grant you victory. Therefore, worship. And in verse 2 of Psalm 126, the psalmist is saying, Then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue with singing. Then among the nations it was said, the nation said as follows, The Lord has done great things for them. One day the world will look at us and say, The Lord has done great things for them. When the enemy beholds your smile and your song, your joy in the presence of God, they will say. The world will say, the Lord has done great things in the life of that woman. In the life of that man, it is very beautiful and lovely that even in trials, even in struggles, we have reasons to rejoice because of the presence of God within us. The world is in crisis, but we are in Christ Jesus. We are anchored on the rock that is our God. We are anchored in Christ. The wind may blow, but you won't fall because your house. Your life is built on the rock that is Jesus Christ, and you won't fall. And when the world sees a Christian standing firm on the rock, they don't understand the world, they don't understand the Christian. The world doesn't understand you, the world cannot comprehend why. Even in the face of struggles, trials, and disappointments, the believer has reasons to rejoice, to lift their hands to the heavens and say, Blessed be the Lord, the eternal God forever. When Job lost everything he had, his children, his wealth, his health, Job did not complain. Job did not murmur. On the contrary, the Bible says that Job said, The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Job didn't need to see reasons to understand the struggle and trial he was experiencing. He only needed to see God, and that was enough for him to endure all the hardships he faced. You and I, we need to see God in difficult times. That's why this Psalm 126 is a reflection of God's presence in the life of a Christian. Because in verse 2 it says, Then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue with singing. Then it was said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. And in verse 3, it confirms by saying, The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. The Lord has done great things for you, my sister. Great things the Lord has done for you, my brother. You may wonder what great thing God has done for me. I will answer you, the great thing that God has done for you, for me, and for all of us is dying on the cross of Calvary and granting us salvation. Your name is written in the Book of Life. You belong to God, and God is within you. God delivers us every day, every day you leave your house to go to work. God is delivering you. Have you ever imagined how many times God has delivered you from death? God has delivered you, and He has delivered your family. So many times God saves us from evil and danger. That's why Psalm 126, verse 3, says, The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Some people find their happiness in worldly things, 
but the reason and the source of our happiness should be in God. If the reason for my happiness is Christ and God, I can say with clarity, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. For this reason, my sister, for this reason, my brother, rejoice in the presence of the Lord. For the Lord has done great things. And I say more, the Lord will do great things in your life. Let me repeat, the Lord will do great things in your life. The Lord will do great things in your story, in your family. If you are going through a difficult time, have calmness and patience. The Lord will do great things in your life. And you will cry, but you will not cry in sadness. You will cry tears of joy in the presence of God, and you will be able to say, as the psalmist said in Psalm 126, The Lord has done great things for me, and I am joyful in His presence. Verse 4 says, Restore our fortunes, Lord, like streams in the Negev. Verse 5, Those who sow with tears will reap with joy. This verse 4 talks about the captivity of Israel when they were slaves in a foreign land, but they were set free from that captivity. And verse 5 confirms it by saying, Those who sow with tears will reap with joy. This means that every tear you have shed will be transformed into joy. Every tear you have shed, God will turn it into victory. No tear shed by a faithful believer is in vain. Every tear we shed, the Lord will reward. And verse 6 confirms this. Verse 6, the last verse of Psalm 126, says, Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. In other words, God is here. Assuring us that if we go out carrying the precious seed with tears, we will undoubtedly return with songs of joy. We will return with joy in our souls. Therefore, my friend, if you have been crying, if you have been suffering, if you have shed your tears, know that those who carry the precious seed, the precious seed being the word of God, while weeping, will undoubtedly return with joy, carrying sheaves with them. It means the results, the results of the tears you have shed. When we talk about tears, the Bible says in Psalm 30 that weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. The Bible says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. The tears of a faithful believer are not in vain. In the book of Samuel, the Bible tells the story of a woman named Hannah, who had a rival named Penina. Who was this rival? She abused her, mocked her because she couldn't have children. Hannah was barren. She couldn't conceive. And Hannah walked in sadness, with her head bowed, crying. Hannah's life was filled with tears. She cried in the morning, in the afternoon, and at night. She cried all the time. Hannah was very sad because all she wanted was to have a child. But she made a vow. To God. God likes vows, and she made a vow to God. If you need something from God, make a vow to Him. And Hannah made her vow. To God. What was Hannah's vow? She made the following proposal to the Lord, Lord, if you give me a child, if you grant me what I am. Asking for, I will give this child back to you. I will dedicate this child to your altar. This was Hannah's vow. There are many things we ask for. And forget to make a vow regarding what we are asking for. Do you want this victory so badly? Then make a vow to the Lord. Everyone has their own style of making a vow. Hannah's style of making a vow was this, God, if you give me a child, I will give that child back to you. I will dedicate this child to your work. I will donate this child to your temple so that he may be a priest in your house. And that's what Hannah did. Hannah became pregnant with Samuel. God honored Hannah's vow, 
but she made that vow while crying in the presence of the Lord. She made that vow by shedding tears at the feet of the Creator. And God honored Hannah's faith and granted her request, which was Samuel, the prophet. When Samuel was weaned, she took him to the temple and entrusted him to the priest so that he would take care of Samuel, and Samuel would become a priest in the house of the Lord in the future. God is the one who likes vows. Try making a vow to God. You will see, and He will answer you with glory, power, and victory. The Bible also speaks in the book of Isaiah about a king named Hezekiah. And God used the prophet Isaiah to say that King Hezekiah would die. So Hezekiah turned his face to the wall, and he began to cry, cry, and shed tears in the presence of God. God listened and saw the tears of King Hezekiah. God used the prophet Isaiah once again to prophesy, saying, Hezekiah, the Lord has seen your tears. And God will add years to your life. Hey, my sister. God saw your tears. Listen well, my sister and my brother. God saw your tears and every tear you have shed. God will transform into joy. It's not me who is promising this, it is the word of God. It is God who is promising this to us. Psalm 126, verse 5, tells us, Those who sow in tears shall reap with joy. Meaning that those who cry out to God, God responds. Those who cry out to God, God honors their faith. Many cry out of longing. Many cry because they have lost something. Many cry out of anger. Many cry out of jealousy. Many cry because they wish ill upon others. Many cry while watching a movie. But those who weep at the foot of the cross, those who weep in prayer, God answers the tears of the faithful believer and grants victory, blessing, honor, and fulfills the promised made. The Bible says that God is not a man who lies or a son of man who repents. All those who cry out, all those who pour out their tears at the feet of Jesus, will receive the joy and peace that comes from God. Therefore, my sister, if you have cried or are crying, wipe away your tears because a time of joy is coming. A time to sing in your life is approaching. The time has come for you to share your testimony. You will speak of the wonders that the Lord has done in your story. Prepare yourself. Because the reward from God in your life is great. Prepare yourself because the victory that the Lord will give you is great. Your tears are not in vain, your groaning is not in vain. God understands our tears. Each tear we shed is a message to God, each tear that falls from our eyes. The angel collects these tears and brings them to the throne of the Father. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 that there is a time for everything. There is a time to weep and a time to laugh. There is a time to sow and a time to celebrate. Perhaps you have lived through the time of tears, but the time of joy is approaching, the time of honor, the time of conquest, the time of victory in your life, in your home, in your family. Receive this word and take hold of this message. Say, I take hold of this word in my life with all my heart. I love you, my sister and my brother. In this moment, let us pray the prayer of Psalm 126. Let us cry out and ask God, our merciful God, to grant us the blessing of Psalm 126. May every tear that has flowed from our eyes be transformed by the Lord into victory, blessings, health, and prosperity in our lives. Our tears, your tears, have watered the seed of faith, and fruits of hope and blessings will sprout in your life and in your story. Amen. Take hold of this word, take hold of this message in your life. Let us pray, close your eyes, 
and let us converse with the Sovereign Father, the Eternal God, the Creator of heaven and earth. Here in your presence, we stand. We are here to humbly ask you, Lord, because we know that you alone are omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. You are present in all places. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. We enter your presence in prayer. Psalm 126 Has been read, and we want to take hold of all the blessings of Psalm 126 in our lives, God. Your word says that those who weep will receive victory, that those who cry will find relief in your presence. So, Lord, I ask you as a father. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, behold the tears of your daughter. Lord, look upon the tears of your servant who has cried and asked you for this special blessing in her life. Remove all fear and anxiety from our hearts. Remove, Lord, from our hearts everything that displeases your presence. We ask you in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that every depression in the heart, mind, and life of this woman and this man be cast down now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of Truth, you are powerful, you are majestic. Do what the doctor cannot do, do what the earthly man cannot do, do what the lawyer, the judge, the prosecutor cannot do. Holy Spirit of God, embrace the soul of my sister, the soul of my brother. Lord, embrace them with your comfort. For your word says that we do not know how to pray as we should, but your Holy Spirit intercedes for us with inexpressible groanings. So, Lord, through the intercession of your Holy Spirit, I ask you, Lord, in your mercy, grace, and light, overflow with your mysteries, overflow. With your blessings, overflow with your benevolence upon the lives of my sister and my brother, granting victory so that they may testify of the great blessings that you will confirm in their lives, in the sovereign name of Jesus Christ, the one who died and rose again on the third day, in the name of the one who walked on water, in the name of the one who healed the paralytic at the pool of Bethesda, in the name of the one who healed the woman with the issue of blood, in the name of the one who multiplied the loaves and fishes, in the name of the one who is and was and is to come, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Receive your blessing, receive your victory. Receive in the name of Jesus power, grace, anointing, confidence, faith to march in the presence of God with authority in the powerful name of Jesus. We ask you, O Lord God, and we thank you in advance because you are faithful to grant us victory. All honor and glory be given to you from the ages to the ages. Amen and thanks be to God. Repeat this phrase. With me, my tears will be transformed into victory, my tears will be transformed into blessings. In the name of Jesus, I take hold of the blessings and promises of Psalm 126 in my life, in my family, in my home, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Feel relieved, feel light. Feel as light as a feather. Amen. This is the presence of the Holy Spirit within you. May God bless your life abundantly. Thank you very much for participating in this channel. If you are not subscribed, please subscribe. Amen. May God bless you abundantly. Feel embraced by the Holy Spirit. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you and your entire family.